Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a very different one. I wanted to play a game as of sorts or just like have a little fun with books. Today I will be guessing the plots based on book covers. Um, and I thought this would be a cool idea. This idea first came to me when I would just go to the bookstore and I would try to guess the plots of books um, based on their covers and I think it's something that I'm pretty good at um, depending on what genre of course. I think YAs are more predictable than like literary fiction um, but basically I have some book covers here today and the goal is to guess the plot or like the synopsis of the book just based on the cover and like the tagline alone. Um, this is all supposed to be just in like fun. It's not supposed to be like a series thing. I chose contemporary books because contemporary books are usually a lot easier to guess the plot of um, since a lot of them are predictable or like just fantasy books are super hard because you can't really guess a magic system or the world building like based on the cover because it's kind of hard. Um, and yeah, this is basically just a video to shine light on like how we perceive books, like how cover design contributes into our perception of like what the story's about and how that marketing tool is like used because when you shop for books and don't have a lot of time, you usually buy based on the cover. So it's really about how fast you can like predict that this book is going to be a book that you will love and that kind of stuff. So anyway, this is a fun video, really fun. If you want to see what books that I chose, please keep watching. Okay so basically how I did this was I just went on Goodreads and I chose from like their Goodreads book list of 2021 contemporary releases and I just downloaded the covers without like clicking on the synopsis. So I promise I have not looked at the synopsis of these books on my honor and you will see <laughs> that I am truthful because of how bad I will be at this challenge. Um, and yeah, we're gonna get started off with our first one. The first book that I have here is Perfect on Paper by Sophie Gonzalez. Just off the bat, beautiful cover. I love a good cover. Um, the tagline says, her advice spot on, her love life way off. So just from that tagline, I feel like it sounds a lot to me like sex education. If you've watched the show Sex Education, it's basically like uh, our main character gives relationship advice but his own love life is a little bit of like in it's like in trouble or something like he doesn't really have a love life so that's what that tagline gives me vibes of so if this is anything like sex education I will be down to read this book because I absolutely love sex, sex education. Um, I believe this is a YA romance. I'll correct myself if I am, am wrong. But if this is a YA romance, I feel perfect on paper. I don't know. It looks like they're wearing uniforms. So it looks like they're part of like a private school. So maybe she's like... It could be referring to many things. It could be referring to grades. It could be referring to... You know what? I'm going to go with my prediction of the sex education plotline. I think that this main character, um, I don't know how she identifies, but I'm going to go with she. Um, I think that she is like a relationship advice giver. I don't know if that's a thing. But basically she has this good rep on paper, like everyone recommends her, like they're like, um, this girl can help you out, like she can help your relationship out. But her own love life gets a little tricky because she falls in love with one of like the clients that she's that she's helping fall in love get fall in love with someone else does that make sense does that make sense to you i don't know but i feel like that is the plot of this book and i'm so excited i think i'm right i think i'm right i think this is also just like a private it takes place in like a private school that's all the vibes that i'm really getting from this i hope this is a queer romance i really do um that's all the vibes that i'm getting but let us reveal the actual synopsis of this book <laughs> I'm kind of nervous. Oh my god, I was right. Oh my god. Okay, this is awesome. So, the synopsis is, Darcy, this is from Goodreads, by the way, Darcy Phillips can give you the solution to any of your relationship woes for a fee, uses her power for good most of the time, really cannot stand Alexander Brookham, has maybe not the best judgment when it comes to her best friend Brooke, who is in love with someone else, does not appreciate being blackmailed. However, when a brogam catches her in the act of collecting letters from Locker 89, out of which she's been running her questionably legal anonymous relationship advice service, that's exactly what happens, in exchange for keeping her secret, Darcy begrudgingly agrees to become his personal dating coach at a generous hourly rate, at least the goal, to help him win his ex-girlfriend back. Darcy is a good reason to keep her identity secret if word gets out that she's behind the locker. La-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da. 
Um, I don't know if it, it's not clear if she falls in love with. <gasps> oh my god! Oh my god, the main character is bisexual. I called it, I fucking called it, okay? Sorry, my language. I called it from the cover, she's like, her head is turned towards the girl. So like, it's probably like, I don't know, it was either, it was queer somehow, I don't know. But bisexual romance, hell yes. And I was basically spot on for this book. I'm just like so proud of myself. I swear I did not look at the synopsis. The tagline just sounded a lot like sex education, which if, by the way, if you're interested in this book, you should definitely watch Sex Education because it is one of the best shows out there um but also it does follow this kind of like uh plot where it's like the main character gives relationship advice for like it's basically he asks for payment so it's it is kind of illegal I don't know um but his own love life is kind of in shambles so okay first one one out of one that I mean one out of five that's pretty good okay we're gonna go on to the next one the second book that I have here is you have a match by Emma Lord so this one is but the cover is cute. I don't really have any you have a match that sounds like that sounds like very much like app dating app kind of vibes it says oh, sorry I'm reading the thing a new love a secret sister and a summer you'll never forget a new love a secret sister and a summer she'll never forget okay well from that I'm getting nothing <laughs> Um, but what I can tell is that A Summer She'll Never Forget, and then the cover does look a little bit campy, like camp something-ish. I think this takes place in a summer camp, and I think she obviously finds a new love, but I don't know where the sister comes from. Maybe she, maybe this is like a parent trap thing. Maybe she goes to summer camp and she meets her like sister like she meets her long lost sister that was they were separated at birth I don't know that could be like that's honestly a really good plot because Parent Trap is just like a lot of people's favorite movie so people would be like inspired by the Parent Trap and like get trap readers in um that's pretty much all I'm getting I really do think it's a summer camp though because they are in kayaks is that kayaks and she's wearing binoculars and it looks very like it gives you like camp vibes like just the colors of it you know what I'm saying you know what I'm saying okay so I'm gonna go with that as my final answer um and then we're gonna look this up I'm so nervous but I feel like I'm pretty good I don't know okay you have a match um okay 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 um, when Abby signs up for a DNA service it's mainly to give her friend and secret love interest Leo a nudge after all she knows who she is already, avid photographer, injury prone tree climber, best friend to Leo and Connie, although ever since the big embarrassing incident with Leo things have been awkward on that front, but she didn't know she's a younger sister. Okay, so she finds her sister. Oh my god! Oh my god, I'm sorry, I'm just so good at this. Um, when DNA service reveals that Abby's a secret sister, um, it's hard to believe they're from the same planet, especially considering cons her sister's like famous. The log logical course of action meet at a summer camp and figure out why Abby's parents gave Savvy up for adoption. Guys, this is like literally the parent trap. Well, they know about it though. Okay, oh my god. So I was basically right. Basically, she finds out, she does this DNA service. She finds out she has a sister. And they decide to meet up at a summer camp. Um, and she falls in love with like her friend or something but oh my god this actually sounds amazing I love the parent trap I love that plot okay two out of five I'm going pretty good let's go to the next one I don't want this video to be too long okay the forest of stolen girls by June her this one I want to say I want to guess that they're sisters of some kind I don't know for sure this cover is not really giving me much by the way I think it's this cover it looks a little like it looks very dark um and like the the title itself the forest of stolen girls like that is also pretty dark the forest of stolen girls hmm I don't know like is this about like a forest I don't want to take it too literally you know if it could be like metaphorical or something is this like a forest that like a lot of girls go to like when they're like like it's infamous infamously known like I don't know like the cover's not giving me much um I do think it's about sisters um and maybe stolen girls this could also be like the last 
cover where it's kind of like they were separated at birth or they were like separated from each other so their lives were like stolen from I don't freaking know I, I'm making this shit up um that's what I'm gonna go with though I'm gonna go with sisters and this forest that's infamously known for like girls who like go in it and then like never come back I don't know this could be literally this is literally so off um but we're gonna go with it the forest of stolen girls okay Let's read this synopsis. Okay, so after her father vanishes while investigating the disappearance of 13 young women, a teen returns to her secret of hometown to pick up the trail in the second YA historical mystery from the author of Silence. So it's a YA historical mystery. Okay, this is not contemporary at all. I take back what I said. Okay, so Juani's family has never been the same since she and her younger sister went missing and were later found unconscious in the forest near a gruesome crime scene. The only thing they remember, their captor wore a painted white mask. To escape the haunting memories of this incident, this family flees their hometown. Years later, Detective Min, Juani's father, learns that 13 girls have recently disappeared under similar circumstances and so he returns to that hometown to investigate, only to vanish as well. Determined to find her father and solve the case that tore their family apart, Juani returns home to pick up the trail as she digs into the secrets of the small village and reconnects with her now estranged sister. Juani comes to realize that the answer lies within her own buried memories of what happened in the forest all those years ago. Okay, so it is really about like a forest where girls have disappeared and there's like a gruesome, there's like a dark mystery behind it. I love these kind of books because like you just read the premise and you're just like, like I want to know, like tell me what happens. I want to know what happens. Um, so I'm... I will pick this up, honestly. Um, there seems to be Asian rep. I love books with Asian characters. Um, this is a YA his is this in the second YA historical mystery. This is a historical mystery, so I wonder when this takes place. Um, I'm not sure, but this honestly sounds amazing and definitely not what I was expecting. I did think it was about sisters though, so I was right on that front. Um, it's pretty obvious from the cover. Anyway, let's go into the next one. Okay, the fourth one that oh, I'm also not giving myself the point for that other for that for the forest of Star stolen girls, but so the next one that we're looking at is a fa love story. I love this one. I had seen this on Instagram. Once again, I have not seen the synopsis of this. Um, but I've seen it so much on Instagram that and people saying like really raving reviews that I kind of just wanted to guess because it looks just it looks just like predictable like a YA contemporary or a contemporary book romance. Um, I don't know if it's YA yet. So let's see. A fall of contemporary love story. The probably okay. So what I see from the cover is these two characters are wearing like aprons and holding like dishes and plates, which indicates that they work at a restaurant I think or that it looks like they work at a restaurant but they look like they're like into each other you know so I think they meet at a Vietnamese restaurant um because pho they meet at a Vietnamese restaurant and or like he, he I don't know why I feel like I've seen this plot somewhere before like he is the, the, the son of the owner of the restaurant and she's just like a girl looking for a job and she finds a job working at this restaurant and then they like fall in love. I don't know why I've seen this plot in my head so many times but that's what I'm going with. I'm going with like he's the, related to like the owner of the restaurant and they fall in love in this. I mean it's pretty obvious. It could be more complicated. Let us see. Okay. If Bao had to describe himself, he'd say he was a rock, steady and strong, but not particularly interesting. His grades are average, his social status unremarkable. He works at his parents' pho restaurant. I, and even then, he is his parents' fifth favorite employee. Not ideal. Oh, that's sad. But I fucking called it. He works at his parents' pho restaurant. I don't know why. I feel like in these movies, like, it's always, like, it's, like, the guy that, like, is, like, the he's taking over the family business or something like that. I don't know. Um, if Lin Mai had to describe herself, she'd say she was a firecracker. Stable when unlit, but full of potential for joy and fire. She loves art and dreams, pursuing a career in it. The only problem, her parents rely on her in ways they're not willing to admit, including working practically full-time at her family's pho restaurant. At her family's. Oh, okay. Oh my god, this is way more interesting. So, for years, the Mai's and the Wens have been at odds having owned having owned competing neighboring pho restaurants. Bao and Lin, who avoided each other for most of their lives, both respect the feud stems from feelings much deeper than, oh my god, unrequited love. We fucking love it. Okay, so I was completely wrong, but anyway, it's still, like, the vibes are still there. So basically, the these two main characters on the cover, they are 
this the like the sons and daughters the kids sorry of the of like restaurant owners so they're both from like competing um vietnamese pho restaurants um so it says can lin and bao find love in the midst of feuding families and complicated histories that is so cute i freaking love this i love like feuding families like this kind of romeo and juliet oh my god like a like a, this is like a modern contemporary diverse romeo and juliet retelling oh, i love that i love this book i'm really gonna get this book when does it come out it comes out February 9th. It comes out in two days from when I'm filming this. Go get yourself a fall love story. That is just the cutest thing okay, ever. The last cover. I'm gonna, I don't want to take up too much time in this video. Kisses and Croissants by Anne Sophia Jano. Um, I don't know how to say that last name. Okay, so let's, let's, let's gather from this. Kisses and Croissants. It obviously takes place in like Paris. I mean like where else? Uh, there's a Vespa. I think that's what it's called. There's a Vespa. Um, there's the Eiffel Tower in the shadow. I really like this cover design. I think it's super simple, but like it gets the point across. You know, it's a really cutesy. Um, I, there's like a, I'm trying to like see the details. Okay, there's a book. There's like a picnic basket. This is honestly the hardest one probably because it's super vague. It's like not really that specific. Doesn't give really specific clues into anything. I feel like I feel like it has to be centered around the Vespa though because I feel like in cover design they go with this one symbolic image that is like basically pivotal to the story um but I don't know how a Vespa fits in like I don't know maybe this is, like is the main character like is it I don't know who the main character is there's no indication at all of what the main character looks like or who the main character is but I think this is a book about two people obviously because it looks like a contemporary romance I think it's about two people that, this cover's not giving me anything, that I feel like the main character, who whatever they may identify as, um, like goes to Paris, like for the first, like they're, they're, they go to Paris to like travel or whatever, or it's their first time in Paris because I feel like there's very like, you know, cliche, like touristy stuff. So they go to Paris for the first time and they they take they ride a vespa or like they do deliveries honestly i'm in a, it's a shot in the dark but let's go with that um yeah let's go with that cuz oh okay okay 16 year old mia an american girl i knew it an american girl at an elite summer ballet program has 6 weeks to achieve her dreams to snag an audition with one of the world's Best ballet companies, but there's more to Paris than ballet, especially when a charming French boy, Louis, wants to be her tour guide, and the pair discover the city has a few mysteries up its sleeve. In the vein of romances like Love and Gelato, this is the perfect summer adventure for anyone looking to get swept away in the city of love. Okay, so like, I knew it, like from the cover you can tell it's about like an American person going to Paris for the first time. Um, I, I, there is no, that is so interesting that this is about, it's about American ballerina, but there is literally no indication on the cover, unless I'm just like, I can't see it, that it's about ballet, which I think is so interesting because usually covers give you some indication of like, I thought there would be like a ballet shoe like falling out of the picnic basket or like, I don't know, just some indication that this is about ballet, but it is not. So I was wrong. So I'm not going to give myself the points, but yeah, check this book out. Okay, everyone, thank you so much for watching my video. This was so much fun. Please let me know down below if you'd like to see more of these videos. I actually think I did pretty well overall, um, except for a few exceptions, of course, very specific things. But yeah, let me know if you enjoyed this. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to my channel if you want to, and I will see you guys on my next video. Bye.